Good evening. Thank you for joining me in this Bible study this evening as you get your Bibles ready for a study of God's Word with me as we are going to be talking about being consistent in an inconsistent world. And when I think of inconsistency, one of the things that automatically comes to my mind is something I have here called a lamp with a light. And what tends to happen many times is that when the bulb becomes unseated from the fixture, it begins to inconsistently emit light. So a lot of times this happens because of vibrations and things of that nature. And if you've ever had a light fixture, whether it was on the outside of your house or uh, there at the doorway, usually where the door is open and closes and those types of things and the vibrations from that will cause the bulb to become unseated from the fixture and you'll get that flickering effect, which again, the flickering can be quite, well, annoying, can it? And so what we have to do is we have to seat the bulb securely into the fixture so it will emit consistent light. You might say, okay, where are you going with this, DJ? I, I think as we mentioned uh, about the need for a solid connection in seating the light bulb there into the fixture, that I think we would understand that we expect consistency in such things as that and many other things of our lives. It's interesting that Jesus called his disciples as being, well, interestingly, light. That's what we're talking about there. Jesus didn't say that there was an on or off switch. Rather, Jesus said that his disciples, that they are to, as we even today, in Matthew 5 and verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And Jesus goes on to say in Luke 9 and verse 23, Then he said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And what the scriptures are doing here, they're showing us that God not only desires consistency from his children, but even expects consistency from his children. On again, off again, flickering of light is not consistency. We saw that with the lamp that I was just holding. And consistency is defined as steadfast adherence to the same principles, course, or form. There is consistency in his pattern of behavior. See that example there. Because it's marked by harmony, regularity, or steady continuity, free from variation or contradiction. Now, although the word consistency is not exactly found uh, there in the scriptures, the scriptures actually speak much about the very topic of consistency. Consistency is a living model of patience, of determination, uh, strength, regardless of shifty, rootless times. You understand that one of the very things that the Apostle Paul would stress to young Timothy and that of 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 2 through 5, we said, preach the word. And look at this part. I put it in bold and I underline, be ready in season and out of season. Be instant in season, out of season. He wanted him to convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Because look at this, the shifty and the rootless times. He talked about the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires. Because they have itching ears, well, they will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure inflictions, do the work of evangelists, fulfill your ministry. And you know, when I read that right there, all I see is Paul saying, hey, Timothy, be consistent in an inconsistent world. Paul was telling Timothy you be consistent even when it's inconvenient. Paul is saying to Timothy that this is essential, essential for him to take a stand, 
to persevere, to be long-suffering. And, and friends, when we think about our spiritual growth, I, I mean, really think about your spiritual growth, that that only comes through consistent teaching and application of God's words. Now, would our lives be considered consistent as in the steadfast adherence to the principles of the Word of God? Uh, or do our lives contradict the very words of God? Because what we're talking about is daily consistency. Daily consistency. Now, Christianity is viewed, again, as something important. People will quick, be quick to stake their claim as a Christian. And although Christianity is viewed as being important, it is not viewed as an integral part of day-to-day -day living. It's something that people have grown accustomed to compartmentalizing, compartmentalizing. Like the picky customer who, who went to a small food shop and, and saw a new delivery of fresh fruit and, and, and give me two pounds of oranges and wrap every orange up in a separate piece of paper, please. And a pound of cherries, please, and wrap up every one in a separate piece of paper, too. And so she does, although frustrated with the demand of the customer. And what is that there? The customer asked, pointing out uh, a bushel in the corner. And, and the saleswoman, the clerk says, raisins, but they are not for sale. Compartment, compartmentalizing fruit is one thing, right? But compartmentalizing our spiritual lives is another compartmentalizing our spiritual lives is when we wrap up one hour okay we wrap up one hour Sunday on a Sunday to present to God but yet when we look at the scriptures is that what the scriptures are saying no that's not what the scriptures are saying at all Rather, the scriptures are telling us that God belongs in every aspect of our daily lives. We can't just put God in some kind of uh, box over here in the corner and we'll just open it up on Sunday for an hour. My friends, in Luke 9 and verse 23, it says... Then he said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take his cross daily and follow me. Follow me. You think about your day-to-day -day lives and where we really take God everywhere. You know, we think about God living within us. He is, again, an integral part of who we are. As Christians again with the name Christian that means that Christ is living within us as Galatians 2 and verse 20 what Paul said and we think about just like summer is coming up and with summer a lot of times people will start taking vacations and with vacations many times how often do we actually think about where we are going will we find a local congregation of the Lord's people that we can worship with on Sunday or on Wednesday evening or the rest of the week. Maybe, you know, whatever we're doing, is God going to be an integral part of our day-to-day -day lives? And I love that uh, bulletin board that was done uh, a couple years ago here. Summer vacation, take God with you. Take God with you. How important that really is that we take Christ with us daily. Take him with us. And that's what Luke 9 and verse 23 is stressing. That this is a daily thing that we do. Friends, this is a big reason that consistency is lacking many Christians' lives today. That our light is on during services. But what it does is it flickers inconsistently throughout the week. Why? Because we are not properly seated or grounded in the truth as we saw in that lamp. Until I put the bulb securely seated in the fixture. 
it was not going to illuminate. It was not going to illuminate consistently. Look at Colossians chapter 1 and verses 21 through 23. And you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight, if indeed you continue in the faith grounded and steadfast and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. Think about what he's saying. If indeed you continue in the faith grounded and steadfast and are not moved away. Read verses 28 and 29 with me. Him we preach. Talking about Christ. Him we preach. Warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. To this end I also labor, striving according to his working which works in me mightily. Paul uses the word striving. To be consistent in our spiritual lives, we need to be striving in our spiritual walk. And that's something Jesus would say in Luke 13 and verse 24 about strive. Strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able. One who is casually seeking is one who has a more casual, laid-back approach on their own terms. They're kind of sluggish rather than one who is striving to enter, which means putting forth diligent, fervent effort. You know, when we look at the Apostle Paul, many of the passages that we find, we don't see him in such a way. Because he even talked about it in 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24 through 27. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run? but one receives the prize. Run in such a way that you may obtain it, and everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I preach to others, I myself should become disqualified. Friends, you can see the Apostle Paul was all about Diligence and fervent efforts, disciplining his body. And this is a constant thing. It's to be consistent. First John 1 and verse 7, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light. You see the consistency he's talking about? This not on again, off again relationship. He's saying we need to have fellowship with one another. We need to be consistent by walking in the light as he is in the light. And we will have that fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, will cleanse us from all sin. 1 John 1 and verse 7. But friends, one who is casually, casually seeking is one who is just a flickering light. And at any given moment can go completely dark. But you know how inconsistent lives happen how inconsistent lives result. Well, it's through slothful living. To be slothful is the very opposite, obviously, of what the Word of God tells us to be, and that is diligent or fervent in our daily walk, as I was just mentioning with Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. One of the sins that Sodom and Gomorrah was condemned for was that of slothfulness, idleness. Now, Ezekiel chapter 16, very interesting. We find here Ezekiel chapter 16 and verses uh, verses 49 and 50. Look, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. She and her daughter had pride, fullness of food, and abundance of idleness. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy, and they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore, I took them away as I saw fit. Sodom. Look at the look what he's saying. Slothfulness. Friends, we don't want to be like that one talent servant that we see in Matthew chapter 25 that's considered lazy. 
That's how the Lord said, the Lord answered and said to him, in Matthew 25, verse 20, you wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. The other two servants in that parable were doing that which was consistent with what the master desired. They were busy, they were diligent, they were faithful. But the one talent servant was not. The thing is instead of being consistent in our everyday lives, we become complacent. We become comfortable in how things are and the way things are. That's what we tend to do. And sometimes we, we just mosey on along. You know, we've ever heard that word. We mosey on along. And, and you ever see a kid do that where they're just moseying on along, you know? And what's, what is it that you tell them? Most likely you told them to catch another gear and go. Uh, or maybe like one dad told his boy, he says, son, you need to walk like you mean to get there. Walk like you mean to get there. A life that is consistent with God's word and the way he wants us to live is one that is active. It's one that is fervent. It's one that is diligent in service to God. And we need to be walking like we mean to get there. To get what we're going. Show purpose in what we are doing. There's nothing more important or more significant than being consistently consistent in our walk with God. It will make a huge difference in our lives and for the lives around us as they see the light of consistency shining bright every day. No matter where, no matter when, no matter the circumstances. You know, when I think of examples in the in the scriptures, I always uh, think about in this subject, I think about Joseph of the Old Testament, who really showed us what consistent faith looks like. Joseph, who Pharaoh testified of in Genesis 41, verse 38, says, And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom is the Spirit of God? You see, Joseph didn't slack off when he was tempted, lied about, thrown into prison, forgotten. While Joseph was in the waiting room of life, he didn't forget God. He, his life testified of this when he even told Potiphar's wife in Genesis 39 and verse 9 that there is no one greater in this house than I, nor has he kept back anything from me but you, but because you are his wife, how thin can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? From the pit to the prison to the palace, Joseph's life was consistent. And you find in Genesis 50 and verse 20, He's talking to his brothers there. But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Not only Joseph, but I think about Daniel. Daniel is one that stands out as well, who again was a spiritual giant, just like Joseph, who's consistent in his faith in the book of Daniel. Why? Because when Daniel had been taken away from his homeland by, king, by the king of Babylon, Daniel exhibited such an humble attitude in his response to the king's demands, and he was consistent in with how God would have one to conduct themselves. Friends, Daniel's heart was in the right place. Daniel 1 and verse 8 tells us, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now, there are many others that we could go to and think of who lived consistently with the word of God, such as I've mentioned with that of Paul already in the New Testament, who was truly in the midst of an inconsistent world. He refused to allow the inconsistency of the world and the horrible circumstances to put him in a position of idleness, of slothfulness, as mentioned, to keep him from doing that which is good and right in the sight of God and serving God as well as others. And this really is a struggle that we all, we all deal with. The world and all of its inconsistencies attempt us to be lulled into thinking that it's okay when it's not. 
it, it made me think of the irony in Lazy Boy putting out a line of office chairs. I know that always sounds so strange, but I had one of these one time uh, years ago. But, you know, Lazy Boys are about easy chairs. Easy chairs. When we get comfortable, idle, slothful in the spiritual lazy boys of this world, we are showing inconsistency with God's Word. And that's not how God's people are characterized in the Scriptures. With all the ups and downs that this world brings to us, we can't permit such to interfere with our faith and to become inconsistent along with the world because consistency to the will of God is what makes us stand out. It's what makes us different. Paul would write to the church at Thessalonica in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 7. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow us, for we were not disorderly among you. He wrote something similar to the church, Rome. Romans 12 and verse 11, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Paul is saying, as mentioned earlier, walk like you mean to get there. Don't be idle. Don't be slothful. Be fervent in how you serve God. No matter what you come up against, keep walking like you mean to get there. Be consistent in your walk with God, fervently and diligently serving the Lord. So yes, inconsistent lives, certainly, as we see there, definitely comes through slothful living. But, let me add on here that inconsistent lives also comes through shortcuts. Now, we will all agree that we, well, we like shortcuts, don't we? When it comes to directions to assembling some product that we have purchased or, or maybe even looking at a map for that matter, you know, we skim over and we look for how we can speed up the process, don't we? So we can finish or get where we want to be without all the other steps. We're all guilty of that. We've done that so many times in our lives, probably even today, we might have found ourselves doing that. The point is that when we seek shortcuts to maturity, we set ourselves up for, well, ironic and frustrating delays to the very process we are impatient to complete. Eugene Peterson, in his book, Practice Resurrection, wrote, Maturity can't be hurried, programmed, or tinkered with. There are no steroids available for growing up in Christ more quickly. Impatient shortcuts lead to dead ends of immaturity. You know, we sometimes find ourselves gazing at the long road to maturity the same way we tend to grumble at our microwaves for taking too long to cook the food. We do that physically, but oh, we do it spiritually. I always love the story about James A. Garfield. And prior to serving as president of the United States, he was president of Hiram College in Ohio. And one day he was approached by a father uh, of, of a student and he asked uh, Garfield if there were a shortcut whereby his son could get through college in less than the usual four years. He, he said he, he told Garfield that he wanted his son to get on with making money. And the college president, Mr. Garfield, gave the following reply. He said, of course there's a way. It all depends on what you want your boy to do. When God wants to grow an oak tree... He takes a hundred years. When he wants to make a squash, he only takes two months. Now, you know, that always impresses in my mind. And I hope it does yours. Because this goes really hand in hand with the prior point that we were just considering together. That due to the lack of desire, the lack of effort, a lot of squash has been made. 
a lot of squash. Not only in the secular world, but spiritually even. While the oak develops into something that can withstand the strong winds, there are many who do not desire to take the time and effort to develop and grow like that spiritually. The Bible never provides shortcuts. Never. Any biblical character that attempted to find shortcuts, or what we'd call the path of least resistance even, was always left empty with no strength to endure the troubled times that they would encounter. For example, we say we want patience. And when do we want it? Right now, right? We want patience right now. But the Bible teaches there's not a shortcut for that. No shortcut for patience. Because James 1, 2 through 4 says, My brother, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Becoming spiritually mature does not happen overnight. It is something that is developed. You go and, and study the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5. You go and, and, and study 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 9. It talks about adding to your faith. And it's not just about adding to, it's about actually, well, abounding. It's about keeping it's about being steadfast. It's about being immovable. It's a process. We cannot know the depth of our character until we see how we react under pressure. We say we want that which God promises us instantaneously. However, the scripture tells us that our faith is tested by waiting. Hebrews 6, 11 and 12. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Friends, to simply throw a house together without time, without time and correct procedures such as measuring twice and cutting one's mentality with the right material and doing so consistently would be disastrous. We understand that physically. I think of those of old who faced trials like that of Abraham as well as Job. God didn't provide them with shortcuts for the trials. You want to build a faith that is pleasing to God, then trials we will have to endure. Such trials change our relationship with God. Either we move closer to God or we move further away. We can be weakened by our circumstances of the inconsistent world or through our consistent faith show a stronger, genuine faith in the Lord through our adversity. Friends, God has not abandoned us. Rather, we are being refined to be more useful in God's kingdom. And I just simply ask, oak or squash, which are you? Which are you? Spiritual consistency is a magnificent outcome of a well-developed spiritual life. Neglected spirituality naturally tends to being stagnant then gradually falls into spiritual deterioration. That's what happens. God loves people who will continuously walk with Him consistently. It brings the Lord joy. Joy. You think about pleasing, the pleasing of how... Enoch pleased God through his godly walk. And God is pleased with people who walk with him consistently. And Paul tells of his consistent spiritual walk in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. 
When he says, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. You see the consistency he's talking about there? Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. When my walk is not consistent with, the, with that which I profess, I am not pleasing in God. And again, the scriptures show us that God not only desires consistency from his children, but even expects consistency from his children. You see, that's the idea. Again, wondering to see which one are we. Just like the lamp from earlier, you know, which one are we? You see, if it's not seated, you know, it's going to continually, continuously just flicker. That's what it's going to do. But oh, again, we need to make sure that we are shining our light bright and that we are consistent no matter what happens. No matter what comes our way, we're going to stay consistent and we won't flicker. We will stay and remain. We will be steadfast. That's what God expects of his children. You know, I have many times walked over and just as I did with this lamp, I, 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 I seated it properly, grounded it, as we was reading from Colossians chapter 2. It's firmly placed. It's making a great connection now. And now it emits consistent light. God wants us to be a consistent light to all those around us. To show the inconsistent world what consistency looks like. You know, and I can see why children today are so confused. Yes, even those who go to services on a regular basis, many times they see a have-to attitude by their parents to spend maybe an hour at services to worship. And although they hear the words that say Bible things on Sunday, they don't hear it nor see it in action until the next Sunday rolls around where we have to go do Bible things. We say we want our children to have spiritual consistency. Then how about we as parents show our children what consistency looks like? What consistency is in our words and our actions daily? Don't be a flickering light for your children. It just leads to confusion. Speaking of parent to child, I would like to close with the words of wisdom that the proverb writer was giving his own son in Proverbs 4, verses 20 through 27. He says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or the left. Remove your foot from evil. Let me ask you today, how is your spiritual vitality today? Do you truly ponder the path of your feet? Ponder your ways. Are they established as God would have them to be? Are you growing an oak type faith or a squash type faith? Colossians 2, 5 through 7, let's be reminded. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. May we always strive to be rooted and built up in Christ 
and established in the faith, being consistent in an inconsistent world. May we always strive for that. Let me thank you so much for joining me in this Bible study this evening. I appreciate you spending, well, it's about 35 minutes in, a time of looking at God's Word in its plain and simplistic form and realizing we all have work to do. We all do, including myself. Again, these lessons are always meant for me first before they go to anyone else. And again, as I like to remind many people as I have heard it, and as I have said many times, I'm just a beggar who found bread, showing other beggars where the bread is at. And that's really all that our job is as Christians. Our job as Christians, our responsibility, is that we're just beggars who found bread. We found the truth. We found the bread of life. We're no better than the next person. And we need to show consistency in that. Show consistency in our walk with God. That people don't have a question mark as to who we are loyal to because we cannot serve both God and mammon. Matthew 6 and verse 24, Jesus said, we have to follow him daily. We need to trust him and put our lives in his care, following his guide, guidance, his direction, his instruction. And I hope that you're doing that. If you have not committed your life to God, if you have not put on the body of Christ in baptism, I would encourage you to study about that. If you'd like to study with me, I would love to. If you haven't put on the body of Christ in baptism and you need to do that, you let me know. I want to help you. Reach out to me at the contact there on the screen, dj at laportechurchofchrist.com. Love to have a Bible study with you, whether it's through email or whether it's face-to-face, -face, whatever it may be. I would love to talk with you about your salvation according to the Word of God. And as a Christian, if there's something that's amiss in your life, maybe, maybe you've been like that bulb in that lamp that I was showing earlier. As frustrating as, as, as a life can be and, and all the things that we face, it is our responsibility to be the light that God has called us to be and be consistent. And if you found yourself flickering on and off, and I can help you, in your walk with God. Maybe you need to repent of your sins. Confess your faults. Whatever it may be, I would hope that you would get with me as well. I'd love to be an encourager for you and to help you in your walk as we all strive to be consistent in an ever cons inconsistent world that we live in. Please let me know. I would love, love to help you in some way. Let me ask you as well uh, and, and extend this invitation to be our guest, LaPorte Church of Christ. If you're in the LaPorte, Texas area, 704 South Broadway Street in LaPorte, Texas. would so love to have you to join us Sunday morning at 10 a.m. for our Modified Inside Services. We spend an hour of worshiping God in song and as well as taking of the Lord's Supper as we have been commanded on the first day of the week and to hear a lesson of God's word proclaimed and to be encouraged and be edified as God so desires of his people. And so I hope that you would come and join us to worship God in spirit and in truth as we've been directed at 10 a.m. here at LaPorte Church of Christ. Uh, if you're not able to, or if you're not willing to be able to come inside into the modified setting, uh, then we do have the FM transmitter available and you are more than welcome to pull up to one of those reserved spaces that has the sign FM 91.1. You turn your radio to FM 91.1 and you'll be able to hear uh, everything there on the inside of the building. And uh, of course, it will bring out the uh, communion cup as well as the song copies of the songs we'll be singing. Uh, and so forth. So be glad to, to, to have you use that as well if that's comfortable for you. Uh, and also, if you're not able to be with us, you, maybe you're out uh, uh, and you are shut in as some of our members are, and so they utilize the YouTube channel as well as our Facebook page uh, to join us from their home live. And we live stream our lessons, our worship services at 10 a.m. Again, we also have our our our, our, our uh, six o'clock uh, Bible study as we are having now online and also 
Wednesday evening, we have our in-person Bible class. And so we would love to have you at 7 o'clock on a Wednesday evening as well. Several opportunities to be able to get together, and I hope that you will, you will do that uh, and join us. We'd love to have you. Uh, LaporteChurchOfChrist.com, that's our website. Please go to that. More um, information there, sermons, articles, all kinds of resources there for you at your disposal to study. Lots of topics that are covered there. And, well, contact forms as well. To easy access to, to send a note uh, or questions to me. Uh, please utilize that. Would love to hear your questions, your comments, uh, or studies that you would like to have. Well, that's all I have right now. Go be consistent in this inconsistent world. I want to thank you again for joining me. Hope you have a wonderful rest of the day and a great, great week. God bless.